Well, let's pick up now with my pack, Conservative author Douglas Murray and Talk TV host Julia Hartley Brewer, journalist Jenny Cleman. Douglas, um, interesting choice we're left with now to be the next Prime Minister. What did you make also of Boris Johnson hinting he might be back Arnie style? Well, I'm afraid I don't believe it for a moment. Uh, I think Boris Johnson will uh, probably be looking to make some money outside of politics. Uh, not being able to make money whilst being Prime Minister has been one of his gripes. I think he'll try to sign book deals, get, uh, get uh, columns back, give uh, highly paid speeches, and that'll be that. I'm not quite sure how many people will want to hear from him after this, by the way. As I said to you, I think, last time, Piers, my feeling with Boris Johnson in general is that the laughter has died. Well, you know uh, what, you know what Douglas, though? It's interesting. I got, a, I got an email from a to. very distinguished television broadcaster today. I won't name him. Uh, regular viewer of the show, um, one of the greats, and he thinks I'm completely wrong about Boris Johnson. And that this has been a terrible mistake, and that actually there may well be a time when people realise it was a terrible mistake. I don't agree with him, well, but it was interesting to me. There well, is a body here's, here's, of people here's... out there that still like Boris Johnson. Yes, I mean, here, so here's the thing. I mean, as I said in my Spectator column this week, uh, um, the, the Conservative Party has a, a, a reputation for ruthless efficiency. I think that's half right. It's ruthlessly inefficient as a party. Look what they've just done. They've got rid of uh, the leader who got them the largest majority since Margaret Thatcher. And as I say, I mean, at least the people who plotted and killed uh, Julius Caesar had a kind of plan for what to do afterwards. <laughs> the idea that the Conservative Party yet again has knifed one of its leaders, as it always does, and then offers us Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak. I mean, do they really think that the, that the country is going to be engulfed with enthusiasm for this? Well, you race? are speaking My from a country... You don't happening... mind me saying, Douglas, you are lurking at the moment in a country where they have Joe Biden as president and Donald Trump threatening a comeback. So I'm not entirely sure things are oh, much better sure. across the pond. Oh, I know. And it's, it's not rosy anywhere, Piers. <laughs> uh, Jenny, I mean, on a positive note for the Conservative Party, it's been the most diverse lineup of, con of contestants ever... Um, compared to Labour, who just keep electing middle-aged white guys. Well, yeah, you, I guess you've got to get your positives where you can, but I, I don't feel very positive looking at uh, any of, of these guys, which we all knew it was going to be mm. these two. This seems to be the last gasp of a, a party that is out of ideas. It's the same old people with a, with a less entertaining face. And the country is crying out for some really new ideas, some big leadership. We're going to have six weeks of But is Keir Starmer that guy? Is, he, is, is Keir Starmer the great breath of fresh well, air that people I are looking Keir for? I think Keir Starmer has more ideas. You know, the, the, recently, the, the, you know, the Conservative government, their ideas have been Rwanda and uh, let's bring back imperial measurements and then also stealing ideas from the Labour Party when it comes to uh, taxes and, and mm. uh, you know, and windfall tax and all the rest of it. So I think that um, it's really depressing that we've got 0.3% of, of the country who get a say, but neither of those candidates are very... Well, that's the way the, the, the system works. Yeah. Julia, who do you think would be a better chance of running the Conservative Party to actually get re-elected in the next election? Of well, the two candidates? Of the two candidates, I think, realistically, I think uh, Rishi Sunak, in terms of the appeal to floating voters... Remember, it's not Conservative voters or, or party members mm. or Labour party members who, who actually win elections. It is floating voters. And, I, look, I, there's no doubt at all, the whole non-DOM tax status of his wife, uh, that's been a really big issue, failure to... I mean, I'm why not they... sure that really cut through no, with I don't. I don't think it will. I, I think it cut through no. with a lot of people and it'll be played out by Labour, but I don't think it's going to matter so much. A lot of this is going to be just be about televisual appeal... Mm. And a lot of that, I think, I think that is going to be the key thing during the next the campaign as well. What I find fascinating, though, is the diversity right. issue. It's absolutely incredible. It's funny. If you actually look at it, if, this were, if these were two white men who were competing, mm. the left would be all over it yeah. about the nasty racist party. The fact that through no quotas whatsoever, it was women and people who have ethnic minorities, and it wasn't an issue and wasn't brought up by anyone on the Tory side, mm. tells mm. you quite a lot. It does. It's very interesting. It's going to be very interesting which way we yeah. go as a country. Um, I, I still think Rishi Sunak is the... I've always felt for a long time in this government yeah. he's been this, the, the, the best intellect in there. He's and he's got Mr. the best Furlough. background. He's Absolutely. Mr Furlow, so people do also, have warm feelings towards him because, he, you know, there was a time when we were all completely panicking and he came in and gave... And he did it with calm. You know, I think you want somebody now, after yeah. all the chaos of Boris Johnson, he you want somebody like who can actually be calm.